What's up, guys? Hope you're having the best day of your life today, guys. Say a short free response question that deals with rotation. We, I know how much we love rotation. So essentially what we're going to have is a diver that's going to jump off of this platform. They're going to spin in the air. They're going to come into this wonderful tuck position. And then look at that. Ver oh, they're going to get a 10. Look at this is a 10 all day. And they're going to want us to relate a couple things from figure one to figure two and figure three. And guys, don't worry. This diver is safe. They've even made it quite clear this is water. All right. So the diver is going to be okay. It does make me a little worried though, because like they don't give a height here. Like if this was like a million meters, even if this is water, I don't know if they're going to be okay. Anyway, anyway, let's get, let's get past this. So we have three stages here. They're going to complete several rotations. The athlete, uh, figure one shows it after they jump off the platform. Guys, this after they jump off is very, very important because we're going to have to look at the forces that make something spin, right? The torque forces. And by them saying just after, we can't think about the force that the foot applied to the platform that initially got it spinning, all right? So after they leave the platform, we know that we have to try and find maybe some other torque force that's going to make this object spin, or are they just going to spin at the same rate, or are there other factors that can make me increase speed or decrease speed while I'm rotating? And that's what this entire example is about. So let's start here with A, where it says, in a clear, coherent paragraph length, we see this all the time, and if you've been following my videos, I say, whenever we are going to deal with clear paragraph length responses that has figures and equations, things like that, we are going to have to list all the variables that might be in play here in rotation, and we are going to have to make sure that we talk about each and every one of them. So I'm going to list some variables that deal with rotation in this case. I think there might be some torque that might make the thing spin at some R, right? I also know that torque has another formula, I alpha, that we might have to use some moment of inertia and some change in speed. And also, I'm going to look at if I have uh, something that's rotating, it has some momentum, some angular momentum that I say is I omega, and this omega is what's going to be important because they want to explain how the athlete's angular speed increases as it goes from here where they are way stretched out and then when they go into this little tuck position. Now to change speeds, just like in linear kinematics and dynamics, when I change a speed, a net force must be applied. But we already know that there is no other forces that are going to get this object to spin. Yes, there is definitely an FG that is acting on this person, but the weight acts at the center of mass. So if I look at torque to be some force that makes an object rotate times some distance from that center of mass, well, the gravitational force is at R equals zero. So FG does not contribute to the rotation. It does not make the person spin faster or slower. What it does do is make the person accelerate down towards the water, but that is a linear speed change, not a rotational speed change. So I have to say, how else can I get that speed to change? Well, if I look, L over I is equal to some speed. So I know that the moment of inertia of a person is indirectly related. And the beautiful thing is, when there's no outside torque, L is conserved. So throughout this entire dive, L is going to be conserved because there's no other forces that are making this object spin faster or slower. So now I see this indirect relationship, and I know that if the moment of inertia goes down, then the speed must go up. And that's the claim that's being made here. From figure one to figure two, the speed is going up. So therefore, did the moment of inertia go down? Well, let's think, how does moment of inertia work? Moment of inertia, if I just draw a, a circle around this person and make them almost like a disc, the moment of inertia of a hoop is just going to be mr squared. The mass of the object times how far away the particles are from the center of rotation. And we see other moment of inertias throughout this course that's going to be given one half mr squared, one third mr squared. But this mr squared is always going to be there. Why? Because the distribution of mass over some radius from the center of rotation affects the moment of inertia. As r goes down, the moment of inertia also goes down. 
So if we look at this person, when they are really stretched out like this, the R to their fingertips and the R to their toes is much larger than when they come into this tuck position. This is very similar to a figure skater as well. So now the R to the outside of the particles goes down. So from figure one to figure two, R went down, I went down. And then look, as I goes down, what happened? They sped up. So in A, we have to discuss using these relationships that W goes up because I went down. And I went down because of the distribution of mass. So now we know the opposite is going to happen between two and three. And guys, because they asked you, you need to mention that. So now we can say that this right here is for between one and two. But now from two to three, which you also have to reference, you can say now the distribution of mass increases. Now look at the circle around this person. The R now is going to get much bigger. So now R goes up. So therefore, I goes up. And because L over I equals W, as I goes up, W is going to decrease. This person is going to speed up when they go in the tuck position, just like a figure skater when they pull their arms in. And then they're going to slow down as they come out of that tuck position before they land in the water. So this is essentially the things that you need to state if you want to get points for this problem. And knowing this relationship makes part B a layup. Is the rotational kinetic energy K2 rotational of the athlete in figure two greater than, less than, or equal to athlete in figure one? So remember, when they left, they had a really big R. So R was up, I was up, speed was down. Where here, R was down, I was down, so speed was up. And we know that the kinetic energy rotational is equal to one half I omega squared. And we also know that if I say I omega omega, this relationship is really L. So one half L omega equals KE. And we know that this was conserved and not changed. So we know that as the speed goes up, the kinetic energy is going to go up. And as the speed goes down, kinetic energy is going to go down. Therefore, the rotation on figure two, they're going to have a larger kinetic energy here than they do at figure one. And that's the explanation. Using this right here and our knowledge of this relationship here to show that the kinetic energy will increase because the speed increases when angular momentum is conserved. All right, guys, so I hope that helped. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. It helps YouTube share it with more people that are studying for the exam, trying to dominate this thing and get a five. In all honesty, this one was a short free response, okay? So it's going to be a little bit shorter than what we're going to see in 2020 this year, but also a lot of great information and relationships that they can use and build in other problems as well. So this is a very valuable question to understand. I hope you guys have an amazing day today.